What is up, YouTube? Sorry if I sound sick. I actually am sick. Uh, don't worry, it's not COVID, so you won't catch it. Um, anyway, um, before I get into the video, let me remind you, if you like my content, hit that like and subscribe button. And also, uh, if you feel the need to support me, hit me up on my Patreon at patreon.com slash uncommonramen, capital U, capital R. Uh, I do all this in my free time, so any amount of support can help me bring more of this content to you more often. Also, don't forget, if you want to know when the videos are posting, you got to hit that bell icon. Don't know if you know that. Anyway, uh, Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. It was a Secret Lair Commander deck for $99. And let's be honest, they probably will not make that mistake twice. I imagine if they ever do any more Commander decks online, or at least through uh, Secret, Secret Lair, um, it will cost more. Um, just because the sheer volume of people who ordered it, um, I guess caught them off guard because this is so late. This is so late. I think I've received at least three other Kickstarters that came after it before I got this one. That's just how insanely late this is. But without further ado, I have had a chance to uh, watch this played unmodified, and it is not a bad deck. And while its mana base could definitely use some modification, at the end of the day, um, out of the box, this deck is actually pretty freaking good if left unchecked. How does this work? I figured it out. So we got this little guy up here who says, Thank you for being part of Secret Lair. You're welcome. Costs a pretty penny. I could use this box. All right, anyway. So it's it's wrapped and then it's wrapped again. Wow. Just, uh, yeah. Right, jump in. What is it wrapped in? Huh. They wrapped it in, like, wax paper or something. Anyway, so this is the box that it comes in. Now, this is actually a pretty cool box. Um, that being said, this box is uh, definitely the same quality as any pre-constructed commander box that you would get in any of your um, normal purchases. The only difference here, obviously, is this phenomenal art on the back here, which we'll get to see multiple times because those are our commanders. Also, this is the um, pictures on the coin. So you can see the back of him is tails, and the front with Zender Split is our heads. Yeah, you can see it's, it's designed exactly the same, but, you know, maybe they put a little bit more extra love into this. Um, but, you know, first we're going to take a look at that coin, because, honestly, I was expecting something extremely cheap, and, and I'm not saying that it's not completely cheap, but this coin actually is substantial. Um, it, it has some weight to it. I know I can't convey that to you, but this coin, first off, is, is thick. And I, you know, the material that they use, oh man, I can't believe I can't get the focus on there. Yeah. The material that they use, I don't know it, if it's just like a heavy plastic. Well, it has to be, it has to be like a heavy plastic. Uh, from the side, it kind of looks like wood, but this is definitely a heavy plastic. And, and I'm telling you, it's substantial. And it's pretty sick, honestly. When I got to play this um, against somebody, well, somebody played it against me, um, we used the coin for a little bit, but it is, like I said, pretty heavy, and we were worried about the cards, so we actually ended up switching to dice. Um, but yeah, very cool. That's our coin. We got this little dial, and again, this dial is no different from the dials that you would get in um, any normal pre-constructed commander deck, um, with the exception being, obviously, the really sick art and how... I mean, it just covers the whole thing. Normally, you get, like, maybe some little thing down here in the corner, um, but yeah, this one is pretty cool. Probably won't be using it, but you know is what it is. We have ourselves a nice little insert in here. This insert basically goes into how you should play the deck um, on one side and then has kind of a... What, what do we call this? 
a luck tracker. Uh, just a way to keep track of your heads and tails. With the big art right there. And then kind of how to play the deck. But honestly, if you just go look at the uh, description of it online, it, it tells you how to play the deck, honestly. And then finally, the thing we've all been waiting for. The cards. So, yeah, they're not... <laughs> you can see right here. These are textless. Yeah, these are actually the really thick cards that they do um, in all the pre-constructed commanders. Um, so, yeah, these guys are textless, but they're also kind of not your actual commander card. I mean, they're just a, a fun little thing that you can use if you so choose to. We're going to look at those two first because this is probably the coolest part about this whole thing is that when they are connected, and yes, the, the other cards do the same thing, they show the entire art, and it is so freaking cool. And without the text, you can see it as its full thing. And if you flip it around, it's the same thing. Oh, wait, sorry, I got that backward. It's the same thing. Except this time we get more of a spotlight on uh, Ocone. Oak, Oak, Zender Split and Ocone. So anyway, that's pretty sick. Um, these are not foil like the typical ones are, um, but they are the really thick cardboard. Um, they will not bend, not without damaging them anyway. Um, so let's take a look at the actual two commanders. And we're just going to put this up here like that, and we're going to show off our little commander doodly woodlies. All right, so we got Zender Split. Eye of Wisdom and Okun Eye of Chaos. Um, the idea behind this deck is to flip coins, obviously. Um, but what it comes down to is every time you, every time a a flip uh, ends up being successful, and it does not mean matter whether it is you who flipped a coin or if it's your opponent's. Any time a, a a flip uh, is successful with Zender Split, you will draw a card. Okay. Um, and any time you have a successful flip with Okon, um, you will double his power. And I, I need to be clear about this. It is doubling his power, not giving him plus three, plus three. It is doubling his power. So the first time he's going to get plus three, plus three. But the next time, if he still, if he still has the uh, original plus three, plus three, he is actually going to get plus six, plus six. And then after that, plus 12, plus 12, so on and so forth. Um, he is doubling his power. He is an insanely good commander. The downside to both of these being that they both cost five. Okay, so that, that's rough. But, you know, this deck has so many good techs in here to get damage through. It, it just kind of doesn't matter. And it's blue, so obviously we're going to have, I believe, some counter magic in here. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, when we flip these guys around... Yeah, we get the other side as well. And so this is something that was very specific to this... Um, oh, no! To this uh, secret layer is that... Oh, come on, guys. You stood earlier. Is that uh, several of the cards in here are going to have alternate arts, and they're going to be double-sided with alternate arts. Um, while the rest of the cards are going to have normal arts, and uh, a good chunk of these are going to be foil... Um, most of these, or, 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 or a very small amount of them, I think five in total, have alternative arts on both sides of the card. And it's just really cool. So this is our Zender Split and our, our Okun. Um, uh, these guys force you to flip a coin at the beginning of combat. So you're going to get a coin flip um, during combat, or at least at the beginning of combat, um, no matter what. But there are certain cards that will have your opponents flip coins too. And uh, they will see that. So, very cool. So, let's take a look at some of these cards. We're going to take a look at the other three remaining cards that are actually double-sided as well. And what you'll see here is we have Propaganda. So, this is the, the, the kind of what you would consider the Zender Split side, right? This is the blue side of, of our Propaganda. And it is such cool art. Right, and then on the other side, we have the Okun uh, 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 propaganda art, the red background, and so on and so forth. And again, just looks really super cool. Um, I, I honestly, 
am super excited about the, the art for these. They did such a good job on this. And then next up, we have Stitch in Time. And again, this is going to be, you know, the side that is more of the, I guess, the Zender split side. Um, flip a coin if you, if you win the flip, take an extra turn after this one. This is, like, perfect for this deck, um, especially because we have Kark's Thumb in here. And then on the opposite side, we have more of the red background going on here. So this is kind of like the Okun side and just looks incredible. And then finally, we have Krark's Thumb. And again, we have that nice, you know, uh, blue background motif going on it. And I mean, just look at the foil. This is something. So the foils in this deck are not like any of the foils I've ever seen uh, Magic print before. And I'm not saying that they are like super cool warp foil from um, the 40k stuff. But the, the way that they um, uh, articulate it just looks incredible and it's definitely well beyond that of any normal set that you would see and then of course we have our red motif background of Krark's thumb right here and it just looks incredible so those are the special cards that you're going to get in there. We're going to take a look at the entire deck, um, starting here with our Blasphemous Act um, in foil. And I wish I could show... This one is a little bit more subtle. Um, when I get to one of the ones... There, there's one in here, I think it's Krark himself, that just looks really incredible in the foil. But there you go. Blasphemous Act. Duretti. Scrap Savant. Uh, you can kind of see it here. Okay. So the gilding on his little headpiece here pops way more than it does in the Commander Anthology version. So even though this is the Commander Anthology 2 um, symbol, you can see that this is kind of a reprint. And the Commander Anthology 2 one is foil as well. But I'm telling you that the gilding in the hat is, is just far more... Um, pronounced in this in fact the entirety of the gilding on his outfit just looks so much more pronounced in this foil than it does in the normal we've got ourselves a goblin kaboomist and again you're just going to see a whole lot of things here where we're flipping coins and things are happening right the co the goblin kaboomist we want to win the flip because we don't want him to die And you can, you can kind of, it's so hard to, to show it on this camera, but you can, can see where things like the pauldrons right here, just, they pop way more than a normal foil would. Here we go. Crux, Crark the Thumbless. All right. So this is where I had noticed it. If you look in the little metallic parts on his face and even at the little medallions that he has on his, on his necklace, um, they, they look like they almost pop off the artwork. It, it gives it almost a 3D effect to it where it, it allows the rest of the card to like fall into the background and it just looks amazing. And honestly, I wasn't excited for this. I hate foils. I think that foils are over the top. Most of the time they Pringle. They just don't look good in my opinion. And these actually do look incredible. And I, and you know, I guarantee that they won't be using this kind of process uh, in the future unless they do it for things like secret layers and stuff like that. But it just looks incredible. And you can see as I move it over the camera how the metallic parts definitely pop way before any other part of this card. It's just really cool. Then we got Niv Mazette Perun doing his thing. We're going to be casting lots of spells, so we're going to get some value off of that. We got ourselves a Spark Double. And again, just look at that. It just looks incredible. This is the best looking Spark Double I've ever seen. Next up, we have Temple of Epiphany. Yeah, just for the record, the land base in here isn't super great, but it's good enough to get through. And honestly, it's it's better than any pre-con that I've ever seen. We've got Wandering Fumeral. We've 
We've got Buried Ruin. So a lot of this also banks off the idea that your opponents are going to know that that Krark's Thumb is really helping you out a lot. So they're going to try and destroy it. So we have a lot of stuff in here to fetch Krark's Thumb out of the deck, but we also have a lot of stuff that's going to fetch things, uh, fetch Krark's Thumb out of the uh, graveyard as well. Got ourselves a Fabricate, and honestly, the Fabricate is... It's not my favorite art, honestly. Um, my favorite art was the first time that it was printed in Mirrodin, but this is definitely the best-looking foiling I have ever seen on it. The lightning just looks like you could touch it. Uh, just so cool. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to hold up on this video. I'm just so impressed by the foil. I've never been impressed by the foiling in Magic cards, so just put it that way. We got ourselves a Fiery Gambit. Such an interesting card. Um, I remember trying to use this when it first uh, uh, got printed in, in Mirrodin, and uh, never could find a good use for it. Now that we have this little commander deck, this guy is going to be fire. We also got a Frenetic Sliver. I don't think this guy should have been in here. This guy goes infinite in this deck, yes. But um, there was an Ifrit that does the exact same thing. Um, and I think it, it even is the same cost, but I think it has uh, higher toughness and power. Um, that should have been what was in here. Because um, the Ifrit was the original one that, it, that went... Uh, that they found could go infinite in this deck. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have this in here in place of the Ifrit. I just think that the Ifrit should have been what was what they should have used. The old, old art just looks so much better, but still, Frenetic Sliver, super cool, does go infinite with this deck. We've got Goblin Ar Archaeologist. Great Furnace. Is it Boilerworks? Is it Signet? Carplusen Minotaur. And I, I'm, I'm so sorry. The, the foiling is just impressive. The parts that should be shiniest are definitely shiniest. Get ourselves a Lightning Greaves. A Mind Stone, a Myriad Landscape. I'm. This is so. With this foil, you can definitely see the minute details that are going around in the bottom of this. And honestly, I would never have noticed that on the original artwork in non-foil or foil because they do such a good job of just muting it out. And in here, I can see it, and it just looks incredible. I have never appreciated this art before, and with this single printing of this card, I, I super, I really do appreciate this art. And that's not me just being a fanboy of this of this foiling process. I really didn't enjoy the art of this card. I, I thought it looked terrible, and now I can kind of see what's going on here, and I'm just like, oh wow, that's really interesting. So I'm just saying they did a really good job on this. So we got ourselves a negate. So we have some of our counter magic here. And it just looks really good. Path of Ancestry. We've got Ral Zarek. Ral Zarek is a is kind of a beater in this deck. You can get up to five extra turns on his ult if he uh, survives. And again, you can kind of just see how that they make that lightning just pop on this card. This looks really good. <laughs> Got ourselves a Rogue's Passage so we can get our Oakone in when he's doing lethal commander damage. Remember, he's a commander, so he only has to do 21 damage. And reality is that, uh, let's see, the first time he goes from 3-3 three, three to 6-6, six, six, then 6-6 six, six to 12-12, twelve, twelve, then 12-12 twelve, twelve to 24-24. Twenty-four, twenty-four. So, what, three wins? And he's already swinging in for lethal? Um, you don't have to work that hard with this deck. Next up, we have Swiftfoot Boots. When you see these in person, honestly, they look a lot better. Got ourselves a Sword of Vengeance. A Tavern Scoundrel. 
Which again, in this deck, is just such a good card. Look how those coins just shimmer. Despite the fact that the rest of this background ends up muting out really well, the, the coins end up being such a, an eye-catcher on this card. Just so good. Except we have a Thought Vessel. Got ourselves a Tribute Mage. Tribute Mage is in here for your Krark's Thumb. Obviously, there are other things you can target with it, assuming that you have the Krark's Thumb in your hand, but really, the most important thing in here is Krark's Thumb. Next up, we have Whisper Silk Cloak. And the attention to the detail on this foiling is just... Call it what you will, it looks incredible. We got some islands in their foily goodness, and we got some mountains in their foily goodness. Oh, sorry, that was uh, non-foil. So those are our foils in there, and I think there was 48 of them. There might be less. Uh, the remaining part of this is going to be tokens and non-foils. Starting with the Academy Ruins. Ruins. For one in a blue, you can tap it to put target artifact from your graveyard on top of your library. Again, we're just trying to get that Krug's Thumb back into our hand, um, just in case it gets destroyed. Got a Bloodsworn Steward. Given the haste, the plus two, plus two, we're trying to swing in with Okun, we're trying to get lethal. Um, this is a great addition to it. Got Boom Pile, again, flipping coins. Cascade Bluffs. Uh, this is a this is a land that you will not see in most commander decks. Um, they avoid putting lands like this into commander decks um, because these have a they actually fetch a decent price on the secondary market. Um, granted, you will not see shock lands in here. You will not see um, you know triumphs stuff like that in in, in preconstructed decks or even in here for that matter. Um, but they do definitely push the budget on the um, land base that they put in here as opposed to what they do for normal pre-constructed decks. Chandra's Ignition. Um, this is an absolute win condition in this deck. If you can get four flips that are victories with Okun, it puts him up to a 48-48. Then you cast Chandra's Ignition and it kills each opponent. Just outright. Next up, we have Chaos Warp. I would have loved to see this in the foil treatment um, because I imagine just how this part would look with the foil treatment. Um, but unfortunately, it is not. We, we have it in this nice non-foil. Commander's Plate. Um, again, we're trying to protect our commander, specifically Okun. Um, so here's a great way to do so. We got Desolate Lighthouse. Uh, drawing cards, discarding cards. Like I said, we're trying to dig through the deck to get what we need to win. Embercleave, great equipment for Trample, Double Strike, uh, can't go wrong with it. Okun would just smash with this in hand. Got ourselves an Exotic Orchard, a Flamekin Village, a Gamble, super good card. Um, there's high risk for high reward, you know. Goblin Engineer. Again, we have this whole Sacrifice an Artifact, Return Target Artifact with Converted Mana Cost 3 or less from your graveyard to your hand, to the battlefield. Trying to get that Krark's Thumb back. Inventor's Fair, trying to find the Krark's Thumb. Mirror March, flipping coins. It also, this is an absurd card in this deck. Because um, we're flipping coins, so Okun and Zender Split are going to see that. And also, we're just going to get a whole bunch of tokens. Now, does it say, does it still follow the legendary rule? Looks like it still follows the legendary rule, but there are tons of other things we can we can token here. Not to mention what your opponent has in play. Can it target their stuff? For each flip you win, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Whenever a non-token creature entered the battlefield under your control. Okay, it's your control. Well, it doesn't matter. Still, plenty of things. We got ourselves a reshape. Seize the day. Super good card. Two combats. That could be two opponents down in less than a couple of seconds. Shadow Spear, again, super good equipment. Plus one, plus one. Trample and lifelink with, with Okun. Um, the lifelink alone would put you in a spot where it would be very difficult to dethrone you. 
Got ourselves a Shivan Reef. A Spine Rock Knoll. Sulphur Falls. Again, you would never see this in typical pre-constructed commander decks. Uh, I don't know why, because these check lands at this point have dropped pretty low in price. Um, but again, you just don't see them very often. Got the Locust God. Super good card. Solarian West, we can transmute to try and find, uh, oh, well, it's just cost zero. Yeah, we can find something. Got a training center. You will never see a training center, a crowd land in general, in a pre-constructed commander deck at all, ever. That's just never going to happen. Um, there was a point in time where these commanded a, a huge price. Recently, they have dropped significantly in price. But the point is, you will never see them in pre-constructed commander decks. I don't know if they're going to start turning in that direction. But generally speaking, if they can keep the mana base cheap, they do keep the mana base cheap. We've got Whir of Invention. Usri's Fortune... Usri, Fortune's Flame... Just super good flip uh, flip coin card. Uh, there's another one in here that has him on there. Uh, super good as well. Arcane Signet. Chance Encounter. Whenever you win a flip, put a luck counter on Chance Encounter. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Chance Encounter has 10 or more luck counters on it, you win the game. I mean, there are tons of win conditions in this, in this deck. It, it, it really does focus down really well. Got ourselves a Counterspell. Sorry, that was a Command Tower back there. We got ourselves Crooked Scales. Super good card for flipping coins. Typically speaking, not great, but if you have this deck, it works really well. Footfall Crater. Again, we're going for that Haste and Trample. This is great with Okun. Even if he's already been out, giving him Trample, ugh, so good. We've got Impulsive Maneuvers to really make chaos on the uh, battlefield as far as attacking and defending is concerned. We also have Long-Term Plans. Uh, just in case nothing else worked, we can try and get our Crux Thumb using Long-Term Plans. We have Mog Assassin. Muddle the Mixture, another Transmute card. And also Counter Magic. Sorry, don't know why I glossed over that. Planner Chaos. So Plan <laughs> Planner Chaos is such a pain in the butt. Uh, Planner Chaos says at the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you lose the if you lose the flip, sacrifice Planner Chaos. And then whenever a player plays a spell, that player flips a coin. If he or she loses the flip, counter that spell. Right. Um, this is, this really does bring the level of chaos in the game up a notch. Um, I <laughs> I tried using a uh, uh, enchantment destruction. I can't remember what it was at the time. Uh, might have been Mortify, something like that, um, to destroy this. And it got countered because of this. And because of that, it stayed in play the entire rest of the game and just really laid waste to most people's plans for that game. Um, also led to the victory of the person who was playing this deck. So very cool card. We got Ponder, busted card. Got Preordain. Reliquary Tower, so we don't have a uh, hand size. Got Risky Move, another coin flip card that, you know, typically you wouldn't see, but in this deck it's just really good. Got Sakashima the Imposter. This one was one that surprised me. Um, this is just a really great card to begin with, but the fact that it was in here just surprised me in general. This actually has a pretty high price tag. I don't know if because of this reprinting that it has dropped the, the price tag on this, but it did have a very high price tag for some time. We got Serum Visions, uh, all of our nice little one blue draw effects, cantrips, if you will. Uh, slip Through Space, another great way, another cantrip, but another great way to get your Okun in guaranteed. Got Soul Ring. Squeeze Revenge, another fantastic coin flip card. Talisman of Creativity. Temple of the False God. And Temer, oh, sorry, uh, Temer Battle Rage. And finally, Vandal Blast. So, not only does the deck have a great deal of ways of protecting itself, but it has a great deal of ways of getting a Krark's Thumb, has a fantastic uh, amount of ways of getting the Krark's Thumb back from your graveyard. It has multiple win conditions. It is very consistent, and it is, I mean, it's just a beautiful deck. It, the, the, it was just built very well. Um, definitely not disappointed by this in any way. Uh, really quickly, I wanted to show you the tokens and also the, 
with secret layers, you you usually get a card that is um, I don't know, like a, a extra thank you, if you will. Uh, we get this little island here. It's a full art island, uh, and it just looks pretty cool. So there is our. Just really cool. Unfortunately, it's only the one. I like to run entire, you know, sets of the same land, but, you know, I'll I'll uh, I'll let it slide. <laughs> and then finally, we got our tokens in here. Just typical tokens. We got our copies. Uh, we got our treasures. And then on the other side, we have our Doretti emblem as well as our insects. And we have uh, landmines. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, so that is the secret layer that we have been waiting so long for, and I don't, I, I don't know how they messed that up. I don't understand how they didn't expect this to have such a huge demand. Uh, it had a price tag of ninety nine dollars. Typically, their pre constructed commander decks come out at a price tag of about fifty, um, sometimes sixty dollars. Um, this one was just barely above that. And it's just so much better than what they've released before. And they just didn't anticipate the demand on it, which is just a really unfortunate thing. Um, but here it is, finally in hand. We got ourselves our nice little heavy coin, uh, which I'll probably not be using because, honestly, the dice just work out better. Um, and, you know, our little life counter that also probably won't get used. But, you know, again, still very cool stuff. Some people will use that. Uh, and yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Keep it positive. I will remove negative comments. And uh, yeah, if that's it, peace.